All right, guys, Boston Celtics, 54 and a half. They're plus 165 for the one seed, plus 380 for the title, plus 175 for the conference. They were 57 and 25 last year. This just instinctively feels like an over to me, but I don't trust myself because it's my favorite team. But I do think like the the holiday white thing is going to be awesome. And there's a lot of ways to talk about this team. What's the number one thing you're looking at, Rosilla? Their guys play. I mean, other than Porzingis, their guys play. Yeah. So that's why they feel like a safer over for a, one of the highest projected teams of any number you can find. So, you know, usually somebody wins a conference like mid to high 50s and considering like a 58, that, right. 59, 60 range. So I love the depth. I love the versatility. Porzingis scares the shit out of me. But even without him, I think they win a lot of games. House, there was this moment, the, the first preseason game, they put Porzingis in the corner in the Al Horford spot. And Tatum had the ball or somebody had it and they swung around and they threw it to him. He was open. But then somebody closed out on him. But he's seven foot three and he just shot a wide open three over the guy. And I was like, oh. I just think this is a nice spot for Porzingis. I have no idea if he can play healthy. And they're going to post him up and they're going to use, he's going to have these incredible defensive guards. All he's going to have to do is protect the rim. I'm sure there's going to be a couple teams that try to pound him and exploit him. What did you see from him last year that makes you think he could be the missing piece for a Boston Celtics title. Um, his versatility. He absolutely uh, gets it going sometimes. And you you can kind of tell right away yeah. if he's in, in his rhythm. Um, and he surprisingly would go down and mix it up a little bit. Now, you defensively, he can't be under the basket. If he's under the basket, it's a bucket. It's a, he's, a, he's a guaranteed bucket. Against Who was the guy who killed him last year? Vucevic? Vucevic absolutely yeah. annihilated him. Yeah, uh, that Bulls game, I'm telling they, you. They just parked him down below there and, and let Vucevic put him in the torture chamber, and he did it. Um, the biggest question mark to me isn't the fit of Porzingis, because I think it'll work great. Like, you yeah. know, he, 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 he um, I'll knock on wood for it. He, he should be, like, not in harm's way with the construction of this team and that roster. The question to me with the Celtics and the only like hesitation reservation I have, what's the what's the defensive identity? You lost the two stalwarts, the real plus Grant Williams. I mean, I know Grant Williams and Joe Maz couldn't get on the same page. They couldn't figure out, yeah, you know, the the right role for Williams. But those were like tough guys, tough attitudes. Right. They they you know got out to the extended to the perimeter. They had the commitment to do that. What's the defensive identity of this team? Well, Drew's a better defender than Smart is. I yeah, think. and it's not even no close. argument, right. no argument. So, whatsoever. and White and is too. White is better and smart, I think too. Okay. Would you say those okay. are the two best okay. defensive okay. perimeter guards in the league? Caruso and Caruso. Yeah, I think Caruso okay. might be better. You could argue he might be better than both of them. Um, yeah, but they're in the discussion. Yeah, yeah. I mean, some people like look at White as just being too small, and Miami was looking to attack him, and it, sometimes it looked like it was like, oh wait, White's just overmatched at this level. When it matters, but I, I think, you know, the, the most basic thing you're asking for from your perimeter guys is like, just don't screw it up by not knowing what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And White is definitely smart with that. Like, look, the Rob Williams part of it, it's a luxury, but I'm telling you, every time, every few weeks he would land and you'd go, oh, he's hurt. hurt? No, he's mm -hmm. not hurt. Wait, he's hurt. He's playing. I can't tell if he's hurt or not. Like, it's, I just, just telling Portland fans, like, get used to it because it, it's constant. And if your team is trying to win a championship, and you're banking on him being healthy all the time. What would you really compare him to for a, a purchase in Manhattan Beach, like a s golf cart that keeps breaking down? <laughs> it seems like an awesome idea to have a golf cart. I think it is a lot like the golf cart, but not because it's breaking down. It's like, well, hey, I don't drive drunk, but it's a golf cart. <laughs> <laughs> right? So you're like, I'm not really doing anything wrong. It's just a golf cart. How yeah. fast can I go? Probably it's the golf cart. Right. I think their defensive identity is the Drew, Derek White, and Tatum, who I think is going to play really hard this year because okay. I think he's excited that this is his team. I think he is an MVP candidate. I'm not going to pick it. But I think this team's going to really give a shit in the regular season. And I think there's going to be an attitude and identity with them because they have hey, a look, bunch of guys who play hard. After what happened last year, losing to Miami, yeah. there's no reason, like, who are they to think that they can just right. mail it in this year and then see what happens? They should be furious about what happens. They also have a bunch of bench guys that I think are going to give a shit. Like Pritchard, who they paid, but I think Pritchard is, I don't think it's going to happen, but you don't think Pritchard is as the six man of the year conversation with people in a circle? Like, I think I could do it. 
25 minutes a game. Yeah, I'm going to be a top five <laughs> three-point shooter. Like Pritchard's an irrational confidence guy. Uh, I like Brissett. I think Jordan Walsh is going to be a fan favorite. Um, I think their bench is going to come in and swing some home games. I don't trust it on the road as much, but the top six is great. Horford should not play more than 1,200 minutes max. I would just keep him in the garage. I can't one believe of those what car got, covers on what they got from him last year. And but you could even see then him being so good all last year. Like I don't know if that's why he was it's on fumes at the end. But right. uh, that was a big win. He couldn't move in the playoffs. Or he couldn't move against Miami. He couldn't make any shots. We're still out. If they're wrong about Joe Missoula, is that the biggest mistake anyone made this summer? Because uh, if they're wrong about him, they basically went all in and they blamed, they said it was everybody else's fault. And if we just get this guy. Well, did they say that? Or, no, and they or basically they, said but it. I don't know. Does that mean they believe it? You know, I think they, I just don't know how you can do that job the first year and not be making mistakes all the time. Especially like just, with like barely any assistance. Right. And, that, that's the, that's the, the point. Like, how about Jeff Van Gundy in the mix? Well, this is a whole thing. guy. Look at what Very they happy. did assistant coach wise. This is what one of the bits of research I did was like, <laughs> <laughs> just be honest. Yeah. Um, but I wanted to see how they built this up because as I'm genuinely cur- curious about forecasting this, the Celtics team, it was this Jeff, Jeff Van Gundy thing, which was funny senior advisor, but they brought in Sam Cassell good. and Charles Lee, Charles who everybody Lee loves really good. Yeah. Right. The, the first assistant under coach bud on the 21, Winning Bucks team, and then uh, Emil Jefferson, mm. Tatum's guy from Duke, uh, yeah. Phil Presley, like that. That's that's you know doing it right. It wasn't their fault that Ime had the issue that he had, and they get rid of Smart and they get rid of Grant, who were the two guys that he clashed with last year. So they have cleared the fucking runway for this guy. They plowed all the snow off it. They changed the plane tires and they gave this guy a nice plane. And we're going to find out if he's a good coach or not, because I have no idea if he is or not. I don't. And Rosillo doesn't either. I will tell you that there are people that I trust that really do like him. Yeah. But there were, there were a few too many moments late in the season where, you know, I don't, I don't really love being super critical of the coaches because I feel like there's all this stuff going on that we don't know about. But when the coach makes it easy to second guess him, with some of the stuff and you're like, what the fuck's going on? But I'm a big blame the player guys. Like they were pathetic against Miami to close those first two games. And then in game three, you're going like, where's, where's the pride. And then the pride actually shows game up two is the inexcusable one to me when Butler was just punking them. And then everybody got mad at Grant Williams after listen, they, they're out of excuses. This is a seven year run now. And they have, if not the most talented team, one of the most talented teams. Yeah. Tatum's 26. This is right at the time of his career and of a normal NBA star's career where you're supposed to peak 26, 27, 20, 29. Jalen Brown got paid. Porzingis is in the single best basketball situation he's ever been in. And uh, and they have stuff to trade too. They have picks that they can still move around. And if they want to get slightly better, they will. They're spending a stupendous amount of money on this team. This team is like a Golden State Warriors level uh, expenditure, but it's it's hard not to be super pumped. I'll just tell you this. You guys know this because we've certainly all talked about it enough, but I couldn't watch that team play offense in the playoffs anymore. The team that they had, I just couldn't do it. They had to change something. I didn't know they would be as uh, aggressive as they were, but I'm glad they were. I think they had to be that way. You can't be like, no, no, we're good every year because as we laid out last spring, the NBA... You can't just assume it's going to keep going. You got to get aggressive. Unfortunately, the Philadelphia 76ers can't say the same. <laughs> and their over under is 47 and a half, and it's dropped two wins. And I still like the under. This is a mess. Um, House, can they save the season? Just, I, don't, I hope they don't do this. But if this Harden thing is unfixable, like, is there a scenario where they just move on from Daryl to try to save it? Because I feel like that How scenario does that exists. Help them? How does that help them? What do I don't mean? know. Like, what, what makes... else do you do? You have this Embiid window. Well, if they reach the conclusion that by getting rid of Daryl, then Harden will stay and that, that he will be happy. And be engaged for a year? Well, they, they, they would have to, like, <laughs> dangle the extension that he thought he was getting. Like, they'd have to put that back if on the table. If they do that, they should sell the team. 
Well, I just have a hard time believing that the ownership's going, Daryl, we should pay him. And he's like, sorry. Good point. Right? So, cosmetically, I guess, but that would then mean you would have to pay him. And I wouldn't want to pay him. I would see, I would go back. I would have that right side drive in game seven in Boston <laughs> and see Harden go, I don't want to be here. And I'd go, you know this, is, this is why this we're is, not paying him. You know what's funny? Rousseau's going to miss Harden. He's, when it's all over and Harden's retired, Rousseau's going to be, you know what? It was really fun to just. I'm not. Just complain about that. I'm guy. not. Because a lot of it's the way he was officiated. And I look back, I regret those hours. Hmm. I regret all the hours that I put in. Do you, do you think Joel Embiid saying the same thing? When does he say, get me out of here? The Joel only Embiid. thing that matters for Philadelphia is just divining Joel Embiid's intentions and trying to figure out the best possible path to keeping him. Yeah, because we can think Daryl is stubborn and I give him a lot of credit. You know, you moved off of Ben Simmons who doesn't even play for Harden. You had a chance. You know, there was a stretch last year where we were like, hey, look, they're in the conversation if something were to go their way. Uh, I think we all agree, as we touched on earlier, Embiid kind of gets this collective pass about not being that successful in the playoffs where other guys with his profile would start really getting beat up on the talk shows. I mean, it's not, it doesn't mean like, hey, guys, let's remind ourselves this year to shit on Embiid him more because I like him. You know what I mean? Like, I just haven't, I haven't really wanted to do that. Um, but there's some real proof that like some of the stuff I would say about Westbrook not getting out of the first round. Like, I could apply it the same way to Embiid. And the idea, too, that if you have an old traditional center initiating your offense in crunch time playoff possessions, does the game even work that way anymore? Especially okay? over the course of two weeks when you just get to watch every single thing. 400 a, minutes of it or right. whatever it ends up And he's up a little being, late yeah. on the doubles. There's still yeah. some stuff with him where I'm like, man, how can you not feel some of this pressure and all these different things happening? So, look, as much as we're sifting through the Embiid part of this and Daryl will be like, my price is my price. And, you know, all this different stuff, there may be a play here where with Simmons, it, it wasn't, it wasn't dire enough where it could be dire enough that like, there may be a move initiated based exactly how on what you said about like making sure Embiid realizes we're on his side in this more so than hanging out for every last asset. It would be interesting if Embiid just came out and was like, I'm fucking tired of this. I really want to win a title and they've got to fix this. I wonder how that would be because part of it you would go, yeah. you, you. But I mean directed toward Harden and be like, you know what, man? You opted in. Like, we were really good last year and the East is worse. Like, let's try to win a title together. Stop bitching about all this other stuff. Like, we're right here. We should have beaten Boston last year. We you chose. have to play better. You opted yeah. in. Like, yeah. You so opted you know, in, dude. You want, you want to, to make this money. They got rid so, of the coach that you wanted them to get rid of. Right. They brought in Nick Nurse, who won a title for five years ago. I think that's the very same conversation you guys are sort of walking through. It could be the other way. Like him going to management and saying, do what it takes to keep James. I like James. James made me the mother effing MVP of right. the league. We got very far into the... positive. We he got feels a, this way, though. Well, I, don't, I don't think he feels this way. I don't though. think this he is, feels this way. It's the, the, this is the question. This is what I'm saying. You got to divine... His intentions. What Plus, did you watch he game want? six and game seven of the Boston he series? He was hurt. He's going to say James to everybody, Harden was or Embiid? No, Embiid. So I'm we saying, didn't get did the you see the version. James Harden part? But James Harden carried them into to game six and game seven. They wow. weren't in that. Two good games. There was no competition otherwise without James Harden. This is the James Harden truth. I'm trying to tell you what the other side of this might look like, but it's all up to Embiid. It's Joel Embiid's call. If he went to, to Maury and said, get it done with James Harden, and let's go to war. I mean, Nick Nurse, I think, could figure out a way to make this work. Well, I have, have a lot of respect for Nurse. Have you seen some of the stuff coming from there where they're, the, the, it's like kind of veiled dock shots? Yeah. It's like a lot more movement this year. Yeah. It'd be, be nice uh, to be in an offense where the ball moves around. Like, it's just like subtle right, so little No, I'm like looking that. forward to it's Harden off the ball Harris cutting. Stuff. Yeah. It was, Doc, it was Doc holding him back. Yeah. No, Harden's, I mean, Can't you know, wait. he moves like a lot Ginobili-like. Or he moves with that ball. I, Feel, I just love when, like, they used to do the same shit with LeBron. Be like, oh, now he's going to get out, like, push Yeah, the get tempo. out. He's going to run way more. Right, like, he's way more athletes. Yeah. And it's like, actually, he's one of the slower-paced guys because yeah. he's so good at dissecting what happens. So you yeah. can talk about whatever you want to do. The guy's going to default back to what he's comfortable with. So that's what basketball is. Especially and, as you get older. Yeah. Philly owns their own first-round pick this year, but they can't really trade it because they have a protected pick to OKC in 25 and then another protected pick to Brooklyn in 27. 
They have their own first in 29 and 30. They don't really have a lot of avenues to improve this team. I still feel like they should have gone after Dame because I, as I said, when it was happening, like I just thought they had a two or three year window here with Embiid. And, uh, I don't think, I think the window might have slammed shut. So you would have done Maxi and. I would have. I would have tried to trade Maxi to a third team, tried to get those picks and just tried to figure out some sort of package to try to get Dame with and put him with Embiid and see if I have a better chance. But I think they're thinking we can turn Harden into more stuff, keep Maxi. I just don't think they're going to be able to turn Harden into more stuff. I don't think there's a deal for him. I wonder how much the Simmons thing motivates Maury to go like, well, look, everybody, remember? Yeah. Like other GMs would have given in. Other GMs would say, hey, we just need to turn the page on this thing. He waited and waited and waited. But Ironically, the difference is Harden is like one of the great saboteurs yes. we've ever had in any sport. Like Ben Simmons just went to London and went to clubs and he, just like he disappeared. He checked out. James and Harden just like, is clutch, he clutch will save me yeah. on this. He's not disappearing. Harden's like, I'm going to be here and you guys are all going to be fucking miserable. And every like three days, I'm going to do something because he knows how to do this. But so. it's different though because he still is hoping for the contract that's so true. unless he thinks that's why i just can't wait i can't wait to see what's going to happen like is he going to actually sabotage the situation to get out then while also demanding a new deal worth 180 million dollars he also doesn't seem to understand that the other 29 teams in the league have watched the behavior right so it's like if you have some neighbor and they had a dog and you saw the dog attack multiple neighbors, right? And the neighbor came to you and was like, do you want to adopt my dog? Really nice looking German shepherd. I'm like, no. You're talking I just... about Biden's dog? <laughs> yeah. Uh... <laughs> I mean, I know we don't talk politics Commander? a lot on this pod. <laughs> Commander yeah. Biden? Yeah. <laughs> Biden comes to you and was like, hey, Commander Joe, needs a home. can we talk about your dog? <laughs> <laughs> he bit at least 11 Secret Service agents. But yeah, I mean, at some point, the behavior is the behavior and the other teams see this and like, well, we, we trade for this guy. Well, what if he becomes unhappy in three months? No, you're right. But I don't think, I think when you're really this special and you've been this special at something for this long and it's actually gone your way so many times. People just yeah. talk themselves into it. Yeah. And I also think like, look, there's, there's a sense around the league too, that the agents that he's working with, like if you had a clutch if you had one of the one of the like the real foundational agents who then maybe who like this is power this is the part of the agent game that most of us overlook or don't understand is that like when there's a guy who's really valuable to a team that opens up doors for like the agent to have power with that team yeah okay and you know, everyone looked at Lamar Jackson's deal and said, oh, remember all of you that said he needed an agent? It's like, well, he still didn't really get what he wanted. He wanted to be traded. And if you want to be traded, you have to have something that your agent can like barter, meaning other clients or hey, down the road. Because as you know, and I know you hate it and we argue about it all the time, like there are simply just transactions done where the team does the agent a favor. And it probably doesn't come back to pay them back as much as they would hope, but they still keep that line of communication open. So if you're trying to manipulate this a third time and not have the agent that maybe has the most intense client list, it's an even harder thing to pull off here yeah. while on top That's of it, a really good point. not being as desired as he was in the past. They started nine and nine last year house and went 45 and 19, won 54 games. They were basically the team with the best record in the league for the last three-fourths of the season. Harden missed 24 games. Maxi missed 22. And Bede missed 16. That's a ton of wins for yeah. how many games. Yeah. 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 So, it's dropped enough that I'm not positive it's a lock for me. It was a lock at 49 and a half because I was like, they're not winning 50 games. That's ludicrous. But the 47 and a half in a bad conference, it's still a hard under for me. You guys are under? I just, it's a bit like my Kings, or excuse me, it's a lot like my Clippers pick where I'm not going to be wrong on the over. Right. Knowing what could potentially happen here. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. there's what a four to one chance Embiid gets mad in January and it's like, you know what? We've run our course here. Yeah. But if Daryl's still the GM, that doesn't mean anything. You're not just going to trade him for nothing. I just think like, oh, hey, we're going into it. Or we're not quite sure which way James Harden's leaning. Mm -hmm. Then, then how, how do you take the over? All right. The Knicks were 47 and 35 last year and the over under for them for some reason has dropped by a win and a half, even though the conference got worse. They had the pretty much exact same team they had last year. They added uh, DiFincenzo. And uh, 
they signed Josh Hart and it just seems, I don't know why their record would be worse. I guess the question for me is what's the next move for this team? Because they don't have enough to win a title. They're kind of on the hold for, can they get Giannis? Can they get Mitchell? What if Embiid becomes available? So it's this two parallel pass of we're a really good four or five seed, but we're probably not getting it at a round two. But we're also kind of asset maintaining all these dudes in case something bigger happens. That makes me a little nervous with the over under, but Rosillo, I'm I'm going over 45 and a half. I think this is at least a 46 win team. Yeah, it's part of the Tibbs deal where at some point last year it felt like he was done. That was definitely yeah, had a lot of momentum. Like two weeks. When you think about like certain things you'll hear over the course of a season. Uh, it looked like his days were numbered. Not even the case. Jalen Brunson was so far beyond. Like we knew he was good. This was absurd. What he did to the Cavs in the playoffs. And, you know, you look at him and go, okay, well, who's that number two that makes them good enough to feel like they're in that first tier of the East? They're just not. They're not. But their one through eight is pretty good. And, you know, it's it I hate to bring him up again because I spent so much time on him, too much time on him last year. But I think the hope is that Barrett is something that's either tradable or is the defining number two, three guy with some Julius nice playoff Randall. stuff with him though that I think we both liked. Yeah, but the he shooting good games. across the board was down dramatically. Yeah. I mean, he was 40% from three two years ago. He was 31% with a 34 in between that. Um, and, you know, look, I, I brought it up constantly. I thought it was really weird, like, the way they would sub him out. Yeah. They were doing kind of lamello, like, yeah, sure, you're playing in the fourth quarter, buddy, but you aren't. And they would get weird on the patterns there. I just, for them to feel better about their situation, he needs to finally put it together at 23, which usually this means four seasons in, this is who he is, or that he does enough that he's actually valuable enough for whatever that next move is. But good luck. House, they started 10 and 13. They finished 37 and 22, which is a hell of 50 win pace. And everybody's back. Why aren't we going over with this team? I think that we are. Okay. I love the 17 and eight that they went with Josh Hart. I love what, you know, there's a force multiplier kind of effect with this team in terms of when Hart arrived, it delivered an identity to the team. Yep. And then this DiVincenzo addition, which is like, he feels like, yeah, great. But no, that's another Villanova guy. And there's a whole thing going on, like a whole subtext of, of, of this, this rallying. Like they, they, the, the town loves this team and they got to figure out what happens with Julius Randle, but they have tons of flexibility in terms of um, picks and, 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 and talent to land. You know, they're, if, if uh, Toronto decides to be a seller, I expect the Knicks yeah. to be all in on this. So they're, they're a super over for me this year. Randall's last five years, 22, 10, and four. One second team all NBA, one third team all NBA. And he only missed 33 games. There's a case he's like the most underrated guy in the league. Nobody's like, you know, I fucking love Julius Randall. You know, and, and I fell out of love with him in the Miami series. Yeah, I know. But he that. was also, then it turned out he was playing on a bad enough ankle that they had to have surgery for it, you know? So. You're right, because whenever we do the All NBA stuff, I'm like, wait, I think He's I have to vote him. Think. Right? Yeah, I have to vote him in, and then you're right, he plays all the time. I mean, look, there was that year where he was going to be eligible for a contract extension, and he took the money instead of waiting it out like another year. But it was still such a huge number that you're yeah. like, okay, it kind of makes sense. And then when he did it, it was like, oh, it's good that he did it because he had taken a dip down. He's just always a strange player. He's just always going to be a strange like wow, that guy's numbers are way better than I think they are. But in a big game, am I actually afraid of Julius Randle? And the answer is probably no. You had Shamit face that you created. Yeah. Randle face is like a different kind of face. Like he's one of those guys, he'd almost be better at playing with a hockey mask. So we wouldn't see, he's, he's got expressions that just make you think things are going badly or he's unhappy or, but it's just kind of his face. It's a great call. Cause Shamit face has a face that you'd be willing to like overlook. You're like, well, that guy can't be good. I mean, I'm sorry. You have to yeah. win me over because right, right. I don't trust your face. Randall face just shares too much. Cause like when yeah. it's not going right and he's in the building, like that got really weird at points last year yeah. where it felt like the city and the crowd was turning on him. Um, and look, I know that he was hurt, but I, I would say that there were enough moments where he could do stuff in that Miami series. It's like, okay, so you're hurt when all the bad things are happening, yeah. but you're healthy enough when all the good things are happening there. So maybe he grows a giant beard, like a hardened beard. 
They have a lot of first round picks. They have all their own picks. Dallas is protected first, top 10. Detroit's protected first, top 18, top 13, top 11, top nine. Those are the protections. Washington's first, top 12 next year. I think you'll be keeping that one house. We're keeping that one. Top 10 and 25, top eight and 26. And then they have Milwaukee's first, top four protected. So they can mobilize pretty fast with some packages and some things. It'd be funny if the Mitchell thing, well, I don't think the Cavs would do that that way, especially knowing like with Mitchell, I mean, Mitchell would have to force the issue. So Mitchell would have to say, hey, with a one and one left, I'm out of here, which is a little different than if you're just going to straight up be a free agent. Yeah. And then I don't know how many times you're going to keep reading the, the Knicks are monitoring Carl Anthony Towns. I mean, this has been going on for like five years. I, I, I don't even think it's true. They, they're run by Kentucky people. And I think they, well, yeah, but that was the thing is that supposedly like all this was going to pay off. Yeah. And it, you know, they've done a really good job with, with what they have to this point, but landing that big guy and they could have done the Mitchell trade. They didn't. Uh, I don't think they believed that they had enough competition for it. So they thought they're going to maybe get their way. And look, they end up eliminating the guy. You know, when when going into that series last year, I was like, come on, Cleveland's going to be better than New York. And it was, it was kind of humiliating the way they beat Cleveland, I thought. You know who I think is going to have a huge year? Fournier. <laughs> no, I didn't. I just want to wake up for some. Um, Brooklyn Nets, 37 and a half. They are plus 152 for the playoffs. I personally think they blew it, not going for Dame Lillard. So here's where it gets tough because I don't like this team and they are making Ben Simmons the point forward. And Spencer Dinwiddie's had some thoughts about this already. He's positive about it. But, you know, he had the car keys last year and now Ben's going to have the car keys. So he's going to have to learn to adjust off the ball. Um, And we had workout videos posted again. Yeah, there's been some workout videos. They don't have their first round pick this year. It goes to Houston. So they don't have really any incentive to be bad. But I also don't think they're very good. You're talking Dinwiddie, Simmons, Miles Bridges, Cam Johnston, Nick Claxton, Nick Claxton, Finney Smith's in there, O'Neal. They're fine. It's a perfectly ser- Lonnie Walker's in there now. Perfectly serviceable team. Um, I just is it okay if I just never believe in Ben Simmons again? Yeah, I just it was funny. Believe in my Ben Simmons, but I'm not going to believe in the other Ben Simmons. Because I was thinking about like clean slate program. <laughs> like, could we just each have three guys? We go. We have to. We have to be clean slate. We can't bring up any of the shit anymore. So Randall would be a good one for you for a clean slate program. No, because when I did that deep dive on him, where I just watched him yeah. for an entire Miami game, because I was having like a hard time with that series, where I yeah. go, I'm just going to watch him, and boy, did I end up not liking him mm. after a couple of those games, but. Yeah, if I just said Ben Simmons, clean slate program, I can't bring up anything in the past. I have to go in with a totally like open mind. I have to I have to be like an NBA writer that does a profile on him. Yeah. Where I'm like, this guy gets it. It's right around the corner. Right. Could you do it? Could you do it with Russell Westbrook? I, I think Westbrook's like you can't do it anymore. Harden, I would not allow that content to be taken from me. Could you do a clean slate deal with Ben Simmons starting now? I challenge you. I don't know how he looks athletically yet. Because the guy that played for the Sixers until the fateful Atlanta series was just athletically a specimen who I think was one of the best athletes in the league and was an awesome defensive player. And I don't, is that guy still exist? So if you're telling me that guy's back and mentally there's some stuff going on, but at least the athlete part is back, I could talk myself into it. I just don't know. I, when somebody doesn't play for how many years was that? Two and a half? Well, yeah, I mean, kinda. I mean, I think you're going there's... spring of 2021. Throw away the 22, 23. He was a zombie, so it's been. It's it's literally an all time. I don't know. We you you have no but we way might to... know. There, there might deep down we all might know. The big question is, does he like to play professional basketball? I'm really glad you asked that. The answer has been probably not for a while here. Doesn't seem like it. No. But what if? He decides that he that he does. He's really good. He's at, young. He's really good at saying all the right things when basketball isn't scheduled. <laughs> like August, great quotes. Look, if if it were just his health, that'd be one thing. I think he is mentally shot. Yeah, no, I think, no coming back. Right. He's a kid, though. He well, that determines the over under because if if you don't think he's going to be good for them this year, I don't see how they hit the over. 
I don't think he was I think still getting a 35 and 47 team. You remember, I think it was a Boston game where he had a million assists in the first half and they actually took him out of the rotation to close the game because it was getting a little tighter. Yeah. And he was starting to revert to, I don't really want to make decisions here with the ball. And they ended up yanking him from him. Now, if that's because of his back, okay, um, that's what he tells us. Yeah. all the time and that he's back he's ready to go i think the biggest thing with brooklyn here is they built up so much equity despite the weird turnover they had with Kyrie, and they they were 11 12 games over 500 they make that trade they basically play like three to four games under 500 with this group for the like rest of the way games, yeah. but they still held on to a six seed yeah. so i think the overplay that mind trick yeah so i'm going under yeah that i came to the same conclusion because that that one KD Kyrie stretch skewed their record, and I think they're a thirty-five win team. Not we kept thinking house. they were going to fall apart, but they their their record was already like built in to protect against it. And then everybody else around that seating was was you know a game or two or below five hundred. I really like Mikael Bridges, but if he's your your number one guy and the last guy in the Jumbotron video as you're introducing the starters, the guy who's got, got the talcum powder, he's like, and blows it out and then fireworks go off. I'm not that excited about my team. And again, I really like Mikhail Bridges. But I, I love to me, that's he's 35 great. wins. And he, that's your guy. He's showing the ceiling for him is even further than what we thought it could be. Yeah. It's awesome. He's like, I would, I would right. put him above Jalen Brown. But if Jalen Brown was the best guy in this Brooklyn Nets team, I would think they're going to win 34 games. So there you go. House, you're in on the under as well? Yeah, I'm in on the under. Okay. I feel bad. I can't, I can't um, invest in Din Shitty. <laughs> wow. <laughs> well, that's some washed in bad blood. That's so. right. You're right yeah. about that. It would have been, this would have been a fun Dame team. I like how it worked out. It's more fun to have on Milwaukee, but it would have been fun if they just said, fuck it and went after him. Toronto, 36 and a half. They have a new coach. New attitude. They replaced Van Vliet. <laughs> <laughs> they replaced Van Vliet with Dennis Schroeder. Kind of okay. not against it. Okay. They brought in Grady Dick. They owe a top six protected first to San Antonio. So the question is, how good do you want to be? Does that mean they'll tank? My guess is they're probably going to try to be good. And I kind of like the team. They're 41 and 41 last year. I don't understand why it's five wins worse when really the only thing that changed was they turned Van Vliet into Schroeder. And again, I kind of like Schroeder. I thought he was good on the Lakers last year. Um, their chemistry was clearly off. They clearly needed a coach change. Rosillo, it's an over for me. And I have them in the playoffs, I think. I'm going under. Okay, let's hear it. I do think Van Vliet, was that important? Although the, Van Vliet's a weird player where there's all these other like baked in advanced stats that tell you he's actually like terrible. Well, the problem yeah, is they like were, a, there was like, man, they had such bad luck in the clutch last year. And it was like, maybe they had bad luck because Fred Van Vliet was deciding every game for them playing against like Steph Curry and Nikola Jokic. I also think there was some like massive three point percentage number against them that was like absurd. Yeah. So that would speak to your over yeah. call in all this. But, um, I think Van Vliet was just really, really steady for him. And Schroeder, I've had about seven different relationships with. I've We've right. never been better, me and, me and Dennis. <laughs> we broke up. He moved out. He's back in. We, we're doing great. A lot of the young guys that I've liked on this team, like, I needed to be better. It's kind of like a collective Evan Mobley team. Yeah. Where there's a couple dudes. Like, OG and Anobi's going into the Hall of Fame, obviously, for who he won't be traded for. And I, I think we all kind of like him, but like some of the stuff you'd hear about, like who he wasn't offered for, you're like, wait, is that a, is there another one that I'm not aware of? Well, you have a lot of barn stock. I do, but and he wasn't I, good last year. I'm for also, what we thought. Yeah, I'm also like willing to admit, hey, I I got to see like some of the stuff. Like, what do you go to that's really tough to defend? Mm. Not, hey, do you get 15 shots a game? Do you have something that's really tough? And uh, you know, I think he and Mobley, it'd be nice if we saw something this year. What do you got, House? Um, I mentioned uh, in part one about how I'm a uh, petty better, and I really don't forgive easily when mm. a team burns me. Uh -oh. And this team underperformed by yeah, such did. a significant amount last year. Um, and I'm sick of their shit, to be honest with you. Uh, having said all that, I'm on the over because I think that they are a 37-win team with the talent. Well, yeah. the problem is 
that they had an identity and it was a successful identity and they could be a 45 or 46 win team in the East if they maintain that identity. For whatever reason, they decided, it seems as a group, to not continue to bang the hell out of the offensive boards, to push their perimeter defense yeah. all the way out, to play relentlessly. They had this this collection of guys, nobody that was taller than 6'10". Yeah. And that was the game plan, and it really worked. They had 45 or 46 wins. They came in last year, forecasted around that, slightly under it. I was like, wait a minute. I love the way that this team plays. Nick Nurse has them cooking. They have a good identity. They're an inside-outside kind of team. And collectively, for whatever reason, they're like, ah, fuck it. This is too hard. I don't want to do this anymore. And they stopped playing the kind of relentless defense that they 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 uh, had, you know, the previous season. Uh, they got really surly. Like Siakam was always pissed about stuff. It felt like. And then, would like, you see the Messiah quotes about we were selfish last year? And he was basically, you know, and that's what needs to change. It's like, who are you talking about? Your every basketball team is run by four people. One of the best, like, preparation guys, adjustment guys. Like other basketball people rave about Nick Nurse all the time. So yeah. I kind of wanted to go over, you know, like yeah. they're not, there's no way they're that far off from 40 wins or whatever. But I just don't know why in a first year, a new guy coming in, like this could be the the part of the demise for the Raptors where it's like, you know, they had these pieces that were left over. Lowry's gone, Van Vliet's gone, maybe it's Siakam and these younger players that I've all kind of liked. I'll throw Precious in the mix oh, yeah. too. Yep. Like, yeah, I mean, eventually I ask myself, like, how come you still like this guy so fucking much? <laughs> I think Schroeder could be good on this team. I really like the fit. And I don't, wouldn't like him on most teams, I don't think. But even in the world championships, like, they built that whole Germany team around him and Franz. And he was cooking. Like, that. I thought in the playoff series, I thought he really bothered the Warriors. I thought he did a nice job Played on Played his ass Curry. off. You're right. I thought he did a really nice job on, on Jamal when they... You know, Jamal was awesome in the playoffs, but um, they were one of the key moments that happened in one of those Denver games was, didn't he get kicked out? I think he got a second, he got into it with somebody. Or maybe it was Golden State. He got kicked out of one game and you could feel the difference with the Lakers. Like, he was like a pit bull in those series. Um, I, th I just think he's going to, you know, he's a really smart, kind of old school foreign point guard. So you're going to take an over? I'm taking over. Oh, wow. Look yeah, I have them in the playoffs. All right. I think they're going to be all right. I have them over. Grady Dick, excitement level. Um, is there a white guy resurgence right now? Pritchard gets a contract. Grady Dick. Teams want TJ McConnell. Hero's got a chip on his shoulder. Hayward's Kevin expiring. Kevin back with Miami. Hayward expiring. Are white guys back? Not yet. Okay. 